Well, good afternoon, New Spirit family. It is so good to be here with you for this week's devotional and hoping that this video finds you safe and blessed in the Lord. I was out here uh, just uh, praying and giving thanks to the Lord, uh, enjoying the beautiful rain and uh, decompressing from a long and busy week, which I'm sure that many of you can relate. And during this time, I was just praying and specifically lifting up one of our church members, our brother, Charlie Blair. And I want to dedicate this devotional to our brother, Charlie. You see, for most of you that are connected with our church community, you know that yesterday our brother went in to have surgery to have a portion of his thumb removed because it had become severely infected. And I'm so proud of my brother and I want to lift him up because uh, he was, despite this bad news, despite the things that were occurring, so cheerful, so strong in the Lord and uh, just an encouragement to the rest of us. I was calling him to encourage him and he ended up encouraging me because he says, you know, it doesn't matter. It's okay. I know that God is with me. I know that my church is praying for me. And uh, he uh, inspired me to uh, lift myself up and remember that even when we have difficult moments in our life that we can always trust in the Lord. And I was thinking here today as I was uh, praying and just praying for his recovery and comfort, a passage came to mind and that's uh, found in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And I want to read that to you because I think it speaks uh, tremendously to the situation that Charlie is going through, but really a lesson that we can all learn from. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, many of you may say, Irby, what in the world does that have to do with our brother Charlie's surgery and, and the fact that he's losing a portion of his, of his body? Well, it makes a lot of sense if you understand Paul's instructions here from a first century perspective. You see, Paul, being a Jew, a former Pharisee, uh, knew that many in his audience and many of his readership uh, were familiar with the temple worship. So whenever he talked about offering as a living sacrifice, immediately what would come to mind in that first century context would be the temple and, of course, the sacrifices that were offered. And a lot of people who may not be familiar with the process of offering the holy and pleasing sacrifice to God, uh, let's say if they offered a bull, for example, uh, they wouldn't just take the bull and, and set it on the altar and sacrifice it and uh, consume it in, in, its, in its entirety. Rather, when we look at the Levitical instructions for the offerings and the sacrifices, we see that only the choicest portions were acceptable to the Lord, which means that when people would come and they would offer the living sacrifice to the Lord, uh, whether it be a bull or a pigeon or whatever, that the portion, only the best portion could be offered to God, meaning that the other portions had to be cut away so that they would cut away all the other parts and only offer the choicest portions to God. So when we examine this idea, this thought from the perspective of Romans chapter 12, verse 1, uh, we see actually a twofold perspective. Now, from the aspect of from below, meaning from our perspective looking upwards, uh, what many people can say is, well, what it means is, is that, that God demands our best, that we need to offer our best to God, which is absolutely correct, which is true. But from a uh, perspective from above, God looking down upon his creatures, there's something even more beautiful to think of here. You see, in the same way that the doctors informed my brother Charlie that they needed to cut away a portion of his thumb because it was severely infected, in the same way when we look at the living sacrifice, we remember that God is not only expecting the best from us, but he's also doing it to preserve us, to protect us. So we understand that if if our brother Charlie didn't have this portion of his thumb removed, that that severe infection could spread throughout his hand, throughout his arm, and eventually result in a real serious threat to his life. And in the same way, there are times when God wants us to remove the portions of our life, not only because he wants the best from us, but because he also wants to protect us. He wants what's best for us. So that when we remove those portions that don't belong, that are, that are maybe uh, infectious to our life, that are harmful to our life, he does so out of love. So when we look at the portions of our life that, that God maybe convicts us to examine and say, is this really best for me? Are these the best friends that I need to retain? Is this the best lifestyle? 
Do, am I practicing the best habits? That God will look over our lives, examine our lives and say, these portions do not belong on my altar. You are a living sacrifice and I'm asking you to remove those portions that do not belong. Now I want you to understand something. The problem with the living sacrifice is that it can get up and walk away from the altar. But we have to submit to that authority and the discipline of God to say, Lord, it may be painful because it is painful to have things removed from our lives sometimes. It may hurt for us to, to remove the friends and the influences or to walk away from that lifestyle or from that certain job or from the certain habits or the certain uh, things that we enjoy to do that we understand, look, this, this can be dangerous for me. This is infectious for me if I allow it to, to continue and that God does so out of love. So when we examine uh, the instruction from Paul here, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, we see this twofold teaching. Bring your best before the Lord, but understand that not only does God demand us like a coach to bring our best before him, but also like a doctor to remove the things, to cut away the things that, that are not good. And when we understand it from this perspective, we understand the character of God as more as a loving God who wants what's best for us. So I continue to pray for my brother, Charlie, hoping that he recovers. And I'm thankful to the Lord that he gave me this illustration and understanding today. And I hope that it's a reminder to you, stay on the altar. Let God continue his good work in you. Let him remove those portions and trust him when he does so, because he knows what's best for your life. And until next time, my friends, God bless you.